Well, we're nearing the end of the September 18th, 2021 Mediumship Summit that was organized by the Greek vampire hot reading Thomas John, the seatbelt psychic. Um, that was four hours over one day, five mediums, including Thomas John. They would come on. They would give about 15 minutes or so on a topic. They, they'd give a little lecture. And then the last 45 minutes, they would do readings of the people who were attending. This all happened over Zoom. The people who attended paid anywhere from $45 to $55 if they didn't manage to get the ticket for free. And they would stay the entire day because you had to be there ready in case somebody was able to give you a reading. Keep in mind that the people on the screen uh, that you're going to see in the video clips I'm going to show you are, you know, just they would normally come up really large. You just see the one person speaking in speaker view. But that's because we're looking at a recording. What actually happened on the day is the medium is able to see all the little images of the people who are attending. And then I think there was anywhere from 35 or so people that attended. I don't know how many attended the entire day. The first medium mentioned that there was 34 people on the screen. I don't know if they stayed all day or people came and went, but we do see many people um, getting readings with uh, multiple times and they're in the same spot on their couch or sitting wherever they were sitting and um, they're there for the whole summit apparently. I'm going to show you the last um, of the day. Now this is Thomas John himself. He does just as 45 minutes of reading and I'm I have broken this down into clips. I'm not going to show you the whole 45 minutes um, I've been through this many, many times, and there are multiple videos made of this summit. I have them on my channel, Psychics Explained, under a playlist called um, Mediumship Summit 2021. And you can find all the different videos there. There's all kinds. Uh, some are very short, and some of them are hours long. And I was joined by my two very good friends, Janice Boyton and Adrian Hill to help me analyze the videos. Um, they kept me entertained. It was fun to um, to do this together because it's quite a chore to do because it's four hours of footage, but that's in my time, that's 15, 20 hours, plus all the research that I have to do. There's a lot that goes into making these videos and to do this research. So if you do like this work I'm working, this work I'm doing, can you please um, subscribe, hit the like button and leave me comments. I'm happy to answer all the comments I get and um, hit the little bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload a video. So what I'm going to show you first, as I said, are clips of Thomas John in the end. Now, we know that Thomas John hot reads. That means he has information on the person before he starts his his um, his uh, uh, reading. Um, he has been known to cold read, but it's pretty rare, and it's only in circumstances when he has to cold read. But normally he hot reads. So when he's talking about something specific, we know that it is some information he's received from someplace else that has nothing to do with the the world of spirit. I have um, several segments to show you. As I said, I've clipped them out so that we're just getting to the highlights. I'm going to come in and I'm going to talk about them a little bit as we go and, um, and move through this as fast as I possibly can. I wanted to show you a um, with the summit, uh, mediumship summit, uh, flyer look like so that you'd be able to see this and see the different mediums that are mentioned here. I think that's always kind of interesting. It took me a while to get a hold of this. So I want to show it to you. So September 18th, 2021 from 12 to 6 o'clock Eastern time. And there was five mediums and the the mediums are in the order as they show up. It's Lillian Schwartz, this one down here. And then the next one is Brandy right here, Con, 
And then the one after that is Kelly Eckhart, E-C-K-H-A-R-D-T. And then finally, it is Lauren Starr. I have videos in depth, more depth than you will ever know or ever want on these four psychics on my channel. And I had never heard of them before. This brand, brand new to me. The first thing I'm going to show you is a video clip from a reading that was done, uh, Thomas John's first reading of the day. And it is a woman named Sherry. And uh, Sherry's sitting in a car, and I have blurred her out so that you won't know her last name or see what she looks like. So if you see blurring on the screen, it's not you. It is my um, video editing software. So um, what I'm going to show you is a clip from a video that I already made a few days ago, and it's called She Was Murdered. And I'm going to not show you the whole video. I'm just going to show you just a few minutes of a clip. Of, and then I'm going to explain what's going on. Okay. Buddy, and um, hope you guys are having a great summit and having a great time together. And um, so we're, I'm going to close out our summit today and come on and do some readings myself. So I hope you've had a fabulous uh, event together. I've been dropping in here and there and listening to some of the readings and stuff. Um, so in some of the teachings, so I'm really glad that you, um, uh, uh, you know, and, and things like that. So From this point on. Um, and then there's somebody that's coming through that I do believe would be like somebody's daughter. She died very. My, somebody said me? My daughter. Okay. Yes. Okay. What is your name, please? This is Sherry. Sherry. Okay. And did, was your daughter in the Midwest when she died? Yes. Okay. Okay. So then I, uh, so we'll just start with you then and we'll go back to the woman and stuff. So with, as far as your daughter coming through, cause I do feel your, uh, I do feel your daughter coming through in a pretty, a pretty strong way. Do you understand that? I feel that there's a lot of the, the, about your daughter's passing where you don't know exactly what happened. And it's like, I feel that you are still, looking into this or trying to, you know, yes. find out information about this. Do you feel like that's true? Yes. And I also want to say when I'm connecting to this, that I feel that, um, would you put this in the realm of a homicide? Yes. Okay. Um, because I'm getting a feeling of people around your daughter that um, had very, very negative intentions. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know if it would be like I don't know if it would be like a, a an explicit homicide, um, but I pretty much feel um, when this person passed that it would be. I feel like it's a homicide. Um, I feel like that. Yep. Does that make sense to you? She was murdered. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling. I So that was very specific. It is extremely unlikely that a person is going to give a reading, a medium is going to give a reading and start off right off the bat with your your daughter um, was involved in a homicide and that's why she's dead. And then that there were other people involved, multiple people involved. That is very unlikely that somebody would ever do anything like that or say suicide or anything like that unless they knew. That's not something that you... Um, kind of wiggle into slowly, uh, uh, you know, right right out of the bat like that. It's just not something that mediums do unless they already know. So we know he knows. And how did we know he knows? So one of the things I did play for you is that 
he had been popping in from time to time to watch the other mediums from the event earlier in the day. So let me show you one more little clip that will make this very clear. Okay. Right. And and I know that you worry about her and he just wants you to know like they're all watching over her, okay? A lot of love from the other side for your mother and her health issues, but also for you and helping you take care of yourself. So just to be clear, just to be clear, this woman, Kelly, has been giving a reading to the woman we just saw that Thomas John was giving a reading to an hour or two before. And she's been going on and talking to the father and the son. And uh, now she's talking about the mother, the, the woman who's sitting in the car's mother. And she's winding down her reading. She's like, okay, so, all right, so we're coming to the end of your reading now. And I'm going to move on to the next person. And then this happens. Okay. So I'm going to leave you with that. And just know that your dad's amazing. He's got great energy. And he's surrounded. Is he you. with my daughter? Oh, well, I hadn't connected with that far yet. Let me, because these are quick readings. But um, was your daughter kind of, uh, did she pass as a young adult? She passed, yes, yeah, as a young adult. Between like 15 and 25, somewhere in there? She was 36. Oh, so she was a little bit older. Okay, so um, I'm not sure. But would you understand that she was very independent? Very. And very stubborn. Is very right? stubborn. Yes. So she, she, did, she is with him. And I, I also feel <laughs> like she loved to push the limits with everybody. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I do think she didn't take anything. She was going to tell you. She like stood up for herself. She was very strong that way. She didn't take anything okay. from anybody. Right? Do you understand that? She did not. Yep. Yeah. So um, in her passing feels like this was an illness. Is that right? Was this cancer? She was murdered. Oh, okay. Don't tell me anything. Just yes, no, I don't know. That's fine. She's not showing me that part then. But before she that happened, was she sick with something or did she have some kind of health issue? She had health issues, yeah. Okay. But they would nothing that was diagnosed. She was she was she had an addiction. Okay, that's a that's an illness to me. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah. I consider addiction an illness like cancer. So yeah, that's so that's, that's how my database works. Because to me that's an illness. Okay. Yeah. So that's fine. And she's she's just letting you know that she loves you and she's so sorry. Um, I feel like before this happened, you guys were um, having a hard time keeping in touch or like she wasn't like getting back to you or something. Is that right? Well, she had just moved. So, I mean, she, you know, she didn't get, she, I was, yeah, you're right, right, right. When she passed, I was looking for a phone call from her. So, yeah, nobody could get a hold of her. Yeah, that's what she's saying. So she's like, I'm so sorry this happened. I'm so sorry that you, I hurt you this way. And not that she hurt you, but like that it hurt you the way it did. She wants you to know that she's okay, she's at peace. And whoever did this, I feel like they're paying for it. Is that right? Uh, they haven't been brought to justice just yet, but they're paying I mean, for they, it they could be going way. through. Yeah. Yeah. So she wants you to know that. And I do feel like you know who this is. She keeps saying you know who did it. So um, I do. Do I know who did it? Like, I, know all, I think I know all three well, of them who did saying, it. So. She's saying you know who did this. She's saying you know. Okay. And she's saying, yeah, okay. not, she's saying, don't waste your energy on, on the hate. Know that it'll, okay. have, that, that, that person will be taken care of in time. Just be patient. And okay. she keeps saying, okay. She... So you can see from that clip, this clip that Kelly did. Um, an hour or two before Thomas John got the exact same information. That's hot reading. That's that's another form of hot reading. When you go to a psychic more than once or you have information already about somebody because somebody told you or you overheard it, as in this case. So all the information that Kelly just got about this murdered daughter that there's multiple people and so on. Thomas John just repeats back as if he's getting it from the daughter in the world of spirit. Wow.
So I wanted to show you that little clip. Now I have Thomas John's next reading, which is really interesting because, and well, I'll explain in just a second. Emily comes up. Emily. Anybody have an Emily in spirit, Emily, or why I'm hearing the name Emily? Because I'm definitely hearing that name, that name, I keep hearing that name, Emily. Um, could be Emma, maybe it's Emma. Samantha has an Emma. Okay. So let's go to, let's go to Samantha then. Hi. Hi, Samantha, how are you? So I'm not gonna show you Samantha's reading because I know Samantha and Samantha and I have had conversations about this reading and she wasn't that impressed. So, um, but what I do want you to know about Samantha is that Thomas John knew she would be there. In fact, he, he knew quite well she would be there. And let me show you how I know that. This is a confirmation email that um, Tracy, Thomas John's assistant, sent to Samantha. And it says, um, he gave me one free admission. Okay, just confirming you won tickets to the summit. Did Thomas give you one free admission or two? And she says, he gave me one free admission. And she's like, okay, great. And so then they send her, there's other emails where, where she sent the um, the code to be able to get into the reading and into the Zoom account, Zoom event. And you can see this is for September 8th, 2021, September 7th, 2021. So when Thomas John knows you're going to be attending, he's given you readings before when he has access to your Facebook page, which he did, um, it's not so hard to get information and to give you a reading when you have that right there in front of you. So that's what happened with the second reading that Thomas John did. So we're going to show you, I'm going to show you some clips from the next session, which is Danielle. And this, uh, this is going to be a two part clip, one, two. So pretty easily, though, it, it, it should go quickly. Um, let's see if we can go to the, um, let's see if we can go back to the woman that would be coming through. So I have an older woman that passed from cancer. Um, and uh, when I connect to this person, um, I feel that um, that you would have been in a caretaking role with this person. I do feel that this is a relatively recent passing, um, so it, it does feel like it's a more of a recent thing, I feel. And um, when I connect to this woman, I feel that part of the reason that she's definitely come through is to sort of thank you. Um, basically, she's saying, you know, hey, you were you were really there for her when it counted. And um, I feel like she's coming through to kind of give you that appreciation. I also see the month of March. Okay. So now Thomas John, keep in mind, knows exactly who's going to be attending. He has um, the information from the registration. He has their information from their payment, if they paid. And so he's forewarned who will be attending the event. So he has all the time in the world, He well, as much time as he needs to be able to find out more information about the people who will be attending. And this is the woman, I found her Facebook page quite easily, especially because her name's right there on the computer screen. And remember, these people have been at this event for at least three hours. And so whenever they, when they're on the screen, the Zoom screen and the little squares, 
it's not really difficult for Thomas John or one of his people to look up the people's names that are on the screen and see what they can find out about the person. The more unusual the name, the better. So if, if especially if a woman is hyphenating her name, that would usually mean that's her maiden name. And then when you have her maiden name as, you know, her name in the middle there, then it makes it much easier to find obituaries because those are probably obituaries to her, her, her parents. Um, it's well, I find it really simple to find obituaries whenever I have the maiden name and the married name of the person who's getting a reading. So I would assume that Thomas John finds that very easy as well. So let me show you something that he, I'm sure he found on uh, Danielle's Facebook page. There it is. So she was taking care of a woman and um, she was very kind and she was very helpful. And, you know, I don't know how Thomas John got the story that of the woman's name and that she passed recently, but I didn't spend much time going over this woman's Facebook page, but it's pretty likely it's there somewhere. So you can see she's a hospice nurse. So she is dealing with people at the last moments of their life to, to help ease them Um you know, into that next phase that they're, you know, they're, they're passing and dying and um, helping the family. Mostly it's a, it's a big, it's a big ask to be there for, for the family and help them out as their loved one dies. And that's what this woman does. So let's continue. Cause I have something else to show you now, as of course, you know, I do. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I feel like there would have been some sort of thing that I'm, oh, and do you know Dottie? Uh, that's my grandma, Dodie, actually. Dodie, Dodie. Yeah. And, 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 and you knew her too? That's my grandma, yeah. And they're talking about you beginning to th think about writing some books and uh, a children's book, uh, another book. Um, I feel like they're talking uh -huh. about something with writing different books and stuff. Is that something that you're doing? I literally just had a conversation with a patient yesterday about starting my second book. Okay. Because I, 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 for some reason, keep getting that. All right. So he already knows who this woman is, obviously, because he knows she's in, she does hospice. But let me show you a couple other things that we found. Um, I found, I'm sure she, he found it just as easily. And I blurred her name out because she's a sitter. But uh, there, uh, it says Danielle. And it shows she started a new job as an author September 19, 2018. Now, this is happening. This reading that she's getting is September 18, 2021, which is kind of interesting. I'm not going to show you the name of the book because then that would reveal the name of the author. But um, she must have, she could easily have told somebody else that she was um, writing another book besides the patient she just was talking about now who might she have told well i don't know let's take another look oh check it out she's friends with lillian medium which is the very first medium that appeared on this summit and she's there's pictures i know it's a picture of her i have blurred it out but um she went to phoenix to have a class with medium Lillian, Lillian the medium. She's, like I said, the first person that appeared. And oh, check it out. She is meeting with her online student for the first time in person. And she's joking around that they have legs because they spend so much time on Zoom. So 2018, Zoom or Skype or whatever it was in 2018 we were using. Uh, so, so this is an online student, but what kind of student? Do you think it's a math student? Do you think it's a, um, she's learning sign language? Uh, do you think that Danielle might be learning um, bonsai trees? What kind of student do you think she is? What kind of teacher is Lillian the medium teaching her? Ah, so now Lillian medium is talking about how her online certified medium, Danielle, is, t is taking the platform for the very first time. So she's was speaking in front of people. So I assume we're going to see we're going to see Danielle at one of these events summits coming up in the future. I would not be shocked.
because this seems to be the pattern where Thomas John um, organizes these women. They're always women. And they come in and they do their um, their little event and give readings and so on. And, and it's publicity for them. They're not making much money at $50 a person for 35 people. It's their chance to show off who they are, their skills, and to get readings. Um, you know, their their websites shown, their emails given, and, and so on. And if Thomas John isn't going to give them a reading, you know, for whatever reason, um, or his wait is too long or whatever, then it'll be much quicker to go one of these other reading mediums. So there's a financial incentive in the future, as well as selling books and classes that these women teach. So I would not be shocked if Danielle shows up Tom, um, in a future event, but Thomas John has said um, just recently that he's putting a um, pause on these on these mediumship summits because you know COVID is we're able to go freely out into the world mostly now, and you know large events can be gathered. So he doesn't think he's going to be doing any more of these summits for a while because they've done a few of them. I think. I think there's four. I hope I don't have to go back and look at those because this is just, oh my gosh, it's just consumed me. So I'm going to just um, mention that there was a lot more that Thomas John got in hot red. I mean, specific to the spot um, knew about Danielle and uh, her her brother and, and so on. And Danielle, of course, is motivated sitter. You guys probably know what that means. It means somebody's really helping the psychic out, even though the psychic says, don't give me any feedback, just say yes, no, or maybe. And then they just, they can't help themselves. They just spill the beans and tell you all about whatever it is that is happening. They, it's, they're very motivated to make the reading happen. So there was a lot more information. Um, I found a lot of the content that Thomas John um, gave to, uh, Danielle during his reading of her I found it on her Facebook page and I have screenshots and I just don't really want to show them there it's I don't know it just feels a little intrusive and personal but we do have them they're all there and um, you know that kind of information is available and that even though Danielle um, is a certified medium now according to Lillian the other medium I don't really know if these people understand what just happened to them. I really doubt they understand they've been hot read by this medium that they respect, that they trust, that is a celebrity. They think of him as a celebrity. He's had two TV shows and a Las Vegas gig. Of course, each of the TV shows was canceled after the first season and the uh, gig at, um, Caesar's Palace in Vegas lasted three months and was canceled because of COVID and he didn't predict it. In fact, he was trying to sell tickets saying, oh yeah, buy my tickets in July because they're now available on Ticketmaster. He was saying that in March of 2020. So we know what happened and they never asked him back. So not very successful, but to these other women who are just starting out with little experience, um, he's considered a celebrity in their eyes. So um, my advice to Danielle, I know you don't care that I'm going to give you advice, but if you're listening to this, Danielle, I would stay far away from Thomas John and Lillian and so on. Go back and be a hospice nurse. I'm sure you're wonderful. I'm sure you're a very loving person and that is a valuable resource re, that's a valuable occupation that people need to have only some people can do that kind of just horrible I shouldn't call it horrible I just know I couldn't do it but it's so important I mean that's like gold it's like being an elementary school teacher or something it's so important and it's it's you're re, you're touching people and the most horrible times of their lives and you're guiding them through the process and what to do and what to expect and for those families out there who have somebody like you to be able to help them through this process this is so important and communicating with the dead is not a thing so 
I would really advise you to stay away from people like this because I really don't want to have to make a video about you and have you exposed as being one of these other people that we've had to do. I, I really truly believe that most of these mediums, their heart is in it. They think they're helping people and no, don't become another person that's affiliated with Thomas John, Danielle. I'm sure you don't care, but I'm telling you anyway, just in the off chance that you might, might really understand what I'm trying to say to you. So I'm going to do, I think one more. All right. Let's just do one more. This is um, one of his last readings. There was a couple other readings that he did in between. Thomas John is very good at um, confusing. It, it makes it very difficult for me to do a video on his readings and break it into segments because he'll start off by like saying, I've got all these different people coming through and he'll give you a whole bunch of details about who's going to be coming through. And then he goes and he sees who comes, who, who, um, who is supposedly going to come through. And he kind of lines people up and he goes from this person to this person, to that person, to that person to see, and he plays them off each other. It's probably very emotional. Um, and he'll, he'll bring them up there, ask them a question. And then he'll be like, no, no let's go ahead and try over here. No, maybe we'll come back to you. I don't know. Let's see. And it's, and it's, it's really hard for me to make a video if I'm going to make a video just about one specific reading because I'd have to go back and include the intro um, far back and then maybe he mentions it again and then I <laughs> no so um, he's just one of these people that it, it just gets very confusing and uh, who's who is he who's coming through what is he doing so there was a couple others that he he called on that he gave readings for specific hits. I researched these people and I found out lots of information about their lives, but I wasn't necessarily able to find exactly what Thomas John was saying. I got close in many cases and I just kind of said, uh, I'm done. I've spent hours on this already. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to hold off. It's not going to prove anything. We already know what's going on. If somebody wanted to do that later, or if there was a reason for me to continue doing it, I can go back and, and continue finding exactly where it was that he found the information about these other grieving people, vulnerable women that he gave readings to. But I'm going to show you one last person. Did somebody's Is somebody's husband and you're dealing with health problems? Okay, so let me see if I can, I'm actually going to actually scan through the pictures of everybody and the um your videos because sometimes that will help me no, no. No. oh i included that little bit because i wanted you guys to understand that he is seeing all these pictures on the screen multiple people and he knows darn well he's going to read next he already has their information ready to go. And um, he's he's just looking for them on the screen or maybe to remember their name or, or, or whatever he's going to do. Um, so I wanted to make sure that you saw how he scrolls through. And he's like, oh, it might... If I jog my memory, if I... Or I <laughs> if I look at you or... <laughs> I'm going to see if you, if um, spirit is calling me to one of you as I'm looking through the, the different people who were on the screen. I included that little bit for you to see. And I just want to ask you, who is the big animal communicator? Or who am I getting that's the big animal communicator? That's that's me. I do animal communication, and my grandmother was very connected to. I was to just going to say, your grandmother, this grandmother is bringing it up. It's almost like she's saying you follow in her footsteps. Oh my goodness, that yeah. means anything. Yeah, so she actually touches it and helps you and guides you. So that was uh, the last reading he does. Um, it's something about a ring, a ruby red ring, and and so on. But I wanted you to see that for several reasons one is that 
she is uh she she also does psychic readings of animals pets animal communicator is what she's officially called and i also thought maybe maybe you picked up on that last little bit where she says my grandmother my grandmother also does it and he says yeah because that's exactly what she's telling me right now and she's like oh my gosh that means so much to me and it does these people that are here are genuinely think they're helping people. They think they're genuinely um, in contact with dead people and with pets. This this isn't like a, a fun entertainment, ha ha kind of thing. As the as our media will tell you, this is serious. These people are very very. Um, they believe this. Oh, and I want to show you. I'm going to show you this. Oops, I've opened it up twice. Okay, so let me show you my evidence. I grayed out who it, what her name is. There she is. Him, something, animal communicator. Him has always been very connected with her pets and has always had the ability to know what her and I guess it's going to say animals um, are saying. So my advice to you, Kim, is the same advice I gave to Danielle. Run away from mediumship, pet psychics, Thomas, John, and all of his associates. This is not some place you want to be, a person you want to be associated with. Go back to school, get your vet's degree, um, um, work work with pets. I'm sure you are a lover of pets. Please stay away from this world. You have like 275 followers on Facebook. This is not a successful thing. Yeah, maybe you're picking up some extra money communicating with pets, but go go do something helpful. Do something real. Do something that actually has value. I know you don't care what I think, but I, I really hope the best for you that you move on with something else in your life. Okay, so if you found this interesting, as I said, you can find all the other videos on the on my channel, Psychics Explained, that say um, it's under the playlist of mediumship summit 2021 and i have lots of videos in there you guys can you guys can just enjoy to your heart's content there's so much interesting things that are happening in those videos and <laughs> i'm telling you it was it was really interesting and um, as i said my friends uh janice boyton and adrian hill were phenomenal helping me out in this in this situation going through these videos and i it, it was intense i will be writing this up for skeptical inquire magazine and you'll be able to find that on my website um, and which is susangerbic.org um, it'll be maybe a month before you would see that there so i'm i'm recording this in june 20th 2023 so in July, look for an article that will sum up the summit. <laughs> and um, you'll find more information about Lillian Schwartz, Brandy Kahn, Callie Eckhart, and Lauren Starr. Please subscribe. Please hit the like buttons. Please leave me comments. Please hit the little bing button. And I'm going to let Thomas John have the final word on this. Um, and like I said, there's just something where you kind of can just know if somebody is legitimate, you know, um, it's a feeling that you get, it's, it's just a sense that you get, you know, 